News with Bill, Episode 9. Centipede Bites Hurt. Well, hello and welcome back to News with Bill, where I tell you about all the weird, odd, and bizarre news stories that you won't believe are true, and in a lot of cases, you'll wish they weren't. Well, in any case, I hope everyone's been uh, been well. A couple things new on the horizon here at News with Bill. First off, I am uh, trying to become more active video-wise. So if you check out newswithbill.com slash YouTube, I'm not only posting the audio versions of these episodes on YouTube, so they're audio-only versions. I'm also publishing quick, uh, I call them short takes. They're single stories that I'm just putting on YouTube. So instead of having one episode as I do with the audio episodes with, oh, six to seven to eight stories, it's a quick, usually about a two-minute or so video snapshot. And you can also find those. I'm experimenting on TikTok and Clapper. So on Clapper, I'm at News with Bill. On TikTok, I'm something a little bit different. You can look for the hashtag News with Bill, but my username on TikTok is Cigar Bill. So... Once again, Cigar Bill on TikTok, News with Bill on Clapper. On either one, you can search for the hashtag News with Bill. And on YouTube, News with Bill. So I hope that you check those out, enjoy them, and let me know what you think. And I'm even experimenting with the blue screen and putting the story and stuff behind me just to see what I can do with this technological stuff. So anyway, let's get on with the stories. So first up today, we have a Chinese serial killer who sold delicious ostrich meat. So the earliest background that has been found on Zhang Yanming was the time he was convicted of murder and sentenced to death back in 1979. Now, for some wise reason, China released him in 1997, and this will undoubtedly prove to be a great decision. And we'll see that as this story goes on. So the next time Zhang appeared in the news was in 2011. People were going missing close to where he lived in the Yunnan province. And a couple of bodies turned up, but for some reason, police didn't even look at Zhang at the time. Zhang continued to farm for a living and played chess. He also sold dried meat to the villagers. He called what he sold ostrich meat. And it reportedly did taste exotic. The thing is, no one was sure where the meat came from, and the reason is he didn't keep ostriches. So back in December 2011, a 17-year-old escaped Zhang's house with a belt around his neck. He claimed that the farmer had been trying to strangle him. Zhang laughed it off and told police that the boy had just been playing a game with him. And here's the thing. The police believed Zhang. Finally, the family of one of the area missing men convinced police to search Zhang's home. They found the missing man's phone in there. Oh, they also found human eyes preserved in alcohol, as well as plenty of other assorted human remains. Investigators managed to tie Zhang to 11 different murders, and China sentenced him to death. As for the ostrich meat? Well, as you might have already guessed by me reading this story, it turned out to be dried human flesh from his victims. Naturally. A drunk man reported missing joins the search party for himself. So 51-year-old Behan Metlu went drinking with a friend in a forest in the town of Ingol in northwest Turkey. His wife reported him missing after he did not return home and she had heard that he'd walked away from his friend while drunk. Rescue teams were called to find Metlu, who had apparently gone to sleep in a house in the forest for the night. So he came across members of the search party in the morning and decided to help them find the missing person they were looking for. He realized they were looking for him when members of the search party began calling his name. He told reporters, After a while, they said they were looking for Behan Metlu. I broke into a cold sweat when I heard my name. I told them I was Behan Metlu, but they continued to search. They didn't believe me. The truth came out when my friend saw me. 
Metlu said he was part of the search team for more than half an hour before this was all figured out. So I guess the moral of the story is never to go missing in Turkey because apparently they have no idea what or who they're really looking for. Adult film actress with backyard butt implants. A mom and daughter who allegedly posed as qualified plastic surgeons have been charged with murder after an aspiring adult film actress's illegal butt augmentation surgery turned deadly. 51-year-old Libby Adam and 23-year-old Alicia Galaz in Riverside, California, were arrested in connection with the death of 26-year-old Carissa Rajpal, who died at a local hospital a few hours after she underwent the botched procedure. The Los Angeles Police Department told news outlets that the two women posed as specialists while performing the illegal procedure and have most likely operated on other victims as well. An LAPD deputy chief told reporters, These individuals have no medical training. They're not experienced, and they're putting people's lives at risk. He continued, After Reg Paul suffered complications from the surgery, the women allegedly called 911 and then left her to die. They took people's cash, and we know in a couple of incidents, it resulted in murder. The Los Angeles County Coroner's Office ruled the aspiring actress's death a homicide due to the acute cardiopulmonary dysfunction and intramuscular, intravascular silicone injections. Detectives reported that they uncovered potential evidence in the case that suggests that the pair used social media to advertise Brazilian butt lifts at a fraction of the usual cost. Investigators told KABC that they suspect the women injected Rajpal with a cocktail of substances used by qualified cosmetic physicians, in addition to other dangerous chemicals. The LAPD deputy chief added, They were mixing them with chemicals and other substances that clearly are not appropriate for any medical procedure that would be performed on a human. Police told local outlets that Rajpal had come to the United States from South Africa to pursue a career in the adult film industry. She actually had two other procedures prior to the butt lift procedure that led to her death. Those were also suspected to have been illegal procedures performed at a home in Encino, California. Police are examining other potential victims and relatives who may have loved ones disfigured or killed after undergoing procedures conducted by the two fake specialists. Both women were released on bond after being arrested and are pending trial. Now, I know that the price must have been a great draw and all, but what could have possibly been going through Raj Paul's mind when she decided to get a major medical procedure in somebody's house? Man gets insurance payout after a centipede bites his nether regions. An unfortunate man from Kaohsiung, Taiwan, decided to take a nap on his floor and was rudely awakened by the sensation of a centipede sinking its jaws and latching onto his scrotum. The man, who is named in local press reports as Yi, explained to reporters that he was woken by a sharp pain in his groin and quickly realized that the centipede had a hold of him. The China press reported that he said, I was shocked and I initially wanted to slam a book down onto the centipede, but quickly realized why I should not do it. Trying to pull the centipede off only made the pain worse, so in desperation, Yi crushed the creature in his fist, at which point it finally released its grip on him. Yi sought medical attention for his wound and was patched up by local medics. And here's the kicker. Yi contacted his insurance company, and was told that he was entitled to payout. A representative from Yee's insurance explained that a centipede bite was a highly unusual event, and as a result, Yee's mishap qualified as an accident, and that made him entitled to a payout for loss of earnings while he recovered. Now, (laughs) I'm just still cringing 
at the thought of a centipede bite in that region. I mean, centipedes are really freaky looking. And if you look at the cover art for this episode, I, I threw a picture of a centipede on there. But that would be frightening. Woman in custody for abandoning a burning car while naked. A Tennessee woman is in custody after abandoning a burning vehicle, damaging a guardrail, stripping to only a mask, tail, and underwear, and assaulting officers. According to the Knoxville Police Department report, officers were dispatched to a reported wreck at Edgington Town Road near Maryville Pike. While on the scene, officers found an abandoned Pontiac Grand Prix at the intersection of Sims Road and Lester Road that was still in motion. The car moved off the road and hit a guardrail, and a witness had to put out a fire located on the car's door. Officers ran the registration of the vehicle and found that it belonged to 32-year-old 32, Marissa Ferrante. Later in the day, officers were dispatched to Sims Road due to a reported naked woman wearing a mask and ringing doorbells. Officers located a woman, identified as Ferrante, walking down Edgington Road near Maryville Pike, wearing only the mask, the underwear, and a tail. Officers tried to approach her, but she ran away from the officers and jumped a fence at a nearby house. Officers followed, and then she pretended to be defecating near a dog enclosure while talking to a dog in the enclosure. She then began eating grass from the lawn. Officers managed to arrest Ferrante while she was attempting to kick, punch, and bite them. While in custody, she reportedly told the officers that she was, quote, called to abandon her car and go into the woods naked. Ferrante was charged with indecent exposure, evading arrest, criminal trespass, resisting arrest, assault on a first responder, disorderly conduct, obstructing a highway, reckless endangerment, and not providing an immediate notice of an accident. I'm just hoping that one of these charges somehow covers the whole pooping next to a dog enclosure thing. Boston High School forced to use a party bus with a stripper pole. Oh, to be in high school again. So a group of high school students in Massachusetts had to ride on a party bus complete with a stripper pole and neon lights during a recent field trip. An experience their teacher said highlights the problems with the education system. He said, it's a funny story, but there actually is a real bus shortage and it speaks to major flaws in our education system. He is now using the attention he's getting because of the original tweet that he made to urge people to better understand educational inequities and other problems facing the nation's schools. I'm worried that there is too much attention being paid to the tweet itself or simply the fact that it went viral instead of attending to the many systemic issues we are facing, not just my students, but students all across the country, he wrote in a follow-up tweet. It is indeed true that school districts across the nation are struggling to hire enough drivers to shuttle kids to school. It got so bad in Massachusetts that National Guard members were tasked to drive school transport vans. So, okay, this story went all heavy and serious on us with the whole transportation issues thing, but let's get back to the fact that these kids were on a party bus with a stripper pole, not to mention neon lights. Now, for me, I'm just saying I would be shocked if they remembered anything about the actual field trip after their experiences on the bus. Man arrested after robbing the same bank for a second time in three days. A man was arrested after returning to a Fountain Valley, California bank that he is suspected of robbing to try and rob it a second time. Around 3 p.m. on a Monday, a man went into the Chase Bank in the 17,000 block of New Hope Street and gave a note to the teller demanding cash. Officials said that the suspect then got away with a large amount of cash before police arrived at the scene. The next day, at around 11.15 a.m., police got a call about another robbery in progress at the same Chase Bank. 
They arrived on scene and found the same robbery suspect from Monday, identified as 33-year-old Samuel Brown of San Diego. Brown, who has prior convictions for robbery in San Diego, was arrested on suspicion of robbery and for an outstanding arrest warrant. He was booked into an Orange County jail where he's being held because no one was dumb enough to put up the $170,000 bail. And I think we have finally found someone who actually proves that bank robbers are even dumber than we all thought in the first place. New Jersey serial killer sentenced to 160 years in prison. A New Jersey judge sentenced a 25-year-old to 160 years in prison for a killing spree that left three women dead. This sentencing came nearly four years after he was indicted on three counts of murder, one count of attempted murder, as well as counts of kidnapping, aggravated arson, and desecration of human remains. Prosecutors say the man used a fake dating profile to lure and kill his victims. 20-year-old Sarah Butler... 19-year-old Robin West, and 33-year-old Joanne Brown. He allegedly carried out the murders between August and November of 2016 and was arrested in December of that year after one of the victim's friends set up a fake social media account to lure the suspect to police. The man pleaded not guilty to the charges and insisted he was framed. I do feel sympathy for the victims, he told the Superior Court judge trying his case. My heart goes out to their family and friends. However, I was not the person who committed these crimes. The judge dismissed the man's claims by pointing to all the evidence in the case, including testimonies from more than 40 witnesses and DNA samples from the victims. Nice try, buddy. If you're going to think you're a big man and kill these women, you should just go ahead and be a big boy and go to jail and take what's coming to you. Pizza Roll Pooper Apprehended A woman named Shirley Wright Johnson had a crappy shopping experience, quite literally. Wright Johnson said she was with her two daughters picking up some things at a grocery store in Moore, Oklahoma. When she reached for a bag of frozen pizza rolls, she quickly discovered something else in her hand human excrement. On a video from local NBC affiliate KFOR, she said, I pick up a bag of pizza rolls and there's literally S, human S. Excuse my language. Police told reporters that someone defecated inside the supermarket freezer onto a bag of Totino's pizza rolls, then covered the mess with another package of the pizza treats. Wright Johnson continued, I grabbed the bag. I felt something smushy on the bag, so I turned it over, and there it was. I was upset. I was disgusted. I feel like I was violated. It's just disgusting. That's the only word I can use. It's disgusting and horrible. Even though she was quick to scrub her hand, the drive home was obviously miserable. More police used surveillance video from the scene and identified a man as a person of interest. He was booked into the Cleveland County Detention Center on unrelated charges while the investigation continues. I, for one, am just glad that the investigators were able to flush this guy out. A man staged his murder victim at a Walmart. A man confessed to killing his fiancée after a 67-year-old woman was found dead Tuesday in a pickup truck at a Walmart in Sebastian, Florida, which is just south of Brevard County. Shoppers who saw the woman inside the truck called 911, and Sebastian police said officers found the body of Janine Bishop in there. Detectives later questioned 56-year-old Michael Despress about her whereabouts. According to police, he made cryptic comments about Bishop's whereabouts while speaking to officers. Police Captain Tim Wood said his story was not really lining up. There is no emotion as far as like, you just lost a, lost a loved one close to you. As detectives continued to question Despress, 
He finally confessed to killing Bishop and then staging her body in the truck, police said. He was booked into the Indian River County Jail on a charge of premeditated first-degree murder. The arrest report stated that he planned the murder of his 67-year-old fiancée for several days, killing her the night before, then driving to Walmart and leaving her body in the car. Captain Wood said, due to them having prior issues, he had already started planning this in advance. Those must have been some issues, huh? I just wish there was more detail about how this one woman was staged as opposed to just being tossed into the driver's seat. But, you know, at the very least, he chose to leave her at a classy joint like Walmart, right? Man sues psychic over his ex-girlfriend's curse. A Los Angeles man is suing a psychic who said she could remove a curse on his marriage put there by a witch hired by his ex-girlfriend. Mauro Restrepo claims the clairvoyant promised he would be happy again if he paid her $5,100 to exercise the spell. Shockingly, after forking over a large down payment, he saw no improvement in his life nor his relationship. As a result, he has decided to sue, quote, psychic love specialist Sophia Adams for fraud, and is seeking $25,000 in damages. According to the psychic, this bad luck was placed on Restrepo by a witch hired by his ex-girlfriend. Unless the curse was removed, the misfortune would ruin Restrepo, his children, and his marriage. Despite receiving an initial $1,000 from Restrepo, Adams did not help him in any way. The suit which also names Adams' husband, daughter, and landlords, says Restrepo suffered sleepless nights, anxiety, and anguish as a result of the non-removal of the curse. Well, hey, Restrepo, if you're listening to this episode right now, if you're hearing my voice, I want you to send a few thousand dollars to feedback at newswithbill.com, and I will put a curse on that other psychic for you. Metal nails and screws removed from a man's stomach. Lithuanian media recently reported a case of a man who arrived at the Klaipeda University Hospital in the Baltic port of Klaipeda. He complained of severe severe abdominal pain, but conveniently failed to mention that he had swallowed over a kilogram of metal objects over the last 30 days. An x-ray examination revealed that the man's stomach was full of metal objects of all shapes and sizes, including nails, screws, and blades. They prepped the unidentified man for emergency surgery and spent over three hours removing the metal objects. Chief Surgeon Algadars Slipovicius said that they had never seen anything like this before. Surgeons at the Klaipeda University Hospital get a couple of dozen cases of foreign bodies discovered in people's gastrointestinal tract every year or so. And so they're fairly common, but the sheer quantity found in this Lithuanian man's stomach made the the case quite unusual. Ordinarily, about 80% of foreign bodies are eliminated naturally. Nearly 20% of them are removed endoscopically, and less than 1% require actual surgery. Although the procedure isn't very complex in nature, the massive quantity of metallic objects in the patient's stomach made it difficult. Doctors were concerned that sharp objects could perforate the stomach and put his life at risk, so they operated as quickly as possible. The procedure took three hours to complete, during which time they removed dozens of objects, ranging in size from a couple of millimeters up to 10 centimeters in size, including nails, screws, and blades. They used the x-ray machine to make sure that they had removed all of the metallic objects. Doctors have not been able to find out too much from the patient as to why his stomach was full of metal, but apparently he had started swallowing the metallic, metallic objects about a month ago. The unnamed patient is in stable condition following the surgery and has been provided with psychological assistance 
and a large magnet. Woman charged with a felonious grits attack. A Florida woman is behind bars for allegedly striking her boyfriend in the head with a saucepan containing freshly cooked grits. Investigators say 49-year-old Desiree Johnson and the victim were arguing yesterday morning when she struck the man with a metal saucepan inside the couple's St. Petersburg residence. The criminal complaint states, Contained within this pan was hot grits, which spilled on the victim, causing a burn to his left arm. The victim also required stitches for injuries to his head and face. Johnson was arrested and booked into the county jail for aggravated battery, and she's being held in lieu of a $5,000 bond and has been ordered by the judge to have no contact with the victim. You will not be surprised to know that Johnson's rap sheet includes five separate battery convictions dating back 20 years, both felony and misdemeanor counts. Her most recent conviction came in 2017 when she was sentenced to 90 days in jail for battery on a person over the age of 65. Now, in that case, Johnson's aunt suffered an eye injury and bloody nose and lip after being struck in the face by Johnson. In 2019, Johnson was arrested for domestic battery after allegedly striking her boyfriend in the face during, ar- during an argument about money. And this victim was the same man involved in the current case that I was talking about at the beginning of the story. So Johnson clearly has a track record of successful and happy relationships. I just hope her boyfriend realizes how lucky he really is. And finally today, man uses sign as a weapon. Jordan Thomas, a Florida man appearing for an arraignment on a battery charge, was arrested after striking a female victim with the letter G that he removed from a courthouse sign. The victim in this attack is the same woman he is accused of battering in the prior case. So in that prior case, Thomas was scheduled to be arraigned on a misdemeanor charge stemming from an alleged battery last month on Chanteria Rollet, a Vero Beach resident. Thomas, a now former Amazon driver, was free on a $500 bond in that case. Investigators say that Thomas was inside the Indian River County Courthouse when he grabbed a signage letter from the blackboard in front of courtroom three and threw it at Rollet striking her with the letter G. The deputy added that there was video from a security camera that validates the charge. The incident, cops say, occurred while the court was in recess. Thomas was arrested for battery and violating the terms of his pretrial release in the prior case. He is now being held without bond in the county jail. I think we can say that he not only violated the spirit of the law in this case, but also the letter of the law. All right, well, that is going to do it for this episode of News with Bill. Please be sure to subscribe to the show and give us a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. And I'd love to hear your feedback or ideas, so please let me know what you think. You can comment on this episode at newswithbill.com slash nine. I'm at News with Bill on Twitter and Instagram. Or you can send an email feedback to feedback at newswithbill.com. And last but not least, you can call and leave a voicemail on the News with Bill hotline. So just give a call to 209 854 4620 and let me know what you think. Don't forget to tell a friend about the show. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time.